I'm seeing this all over the internet, so we got to talk about it. A lot of places, a lot of even news media are saying Biden has made it more expensive for well-qualified buyers to get homes. But we got to talk about what really happened and what's going on. First thing first, President Biden did not change the interest rates. I've actually seen videos on social media. I even seen media outlets say that President Biden did not change interest rates because the president cannot change the interest rates. Changing interest rate has a lot to do with bond markets and a whole bunch of other economic data and numbers that are under the purview of the Department of Treasury. So what's going on here, okay? Essentially, the things that is changing is not the interest rates for non-qualified and well-qualified borrowers. No, the thing that is changing are the fees associated with those interest rates. Now, these fees have always been around, but these fees are going to increase if you're a well-qualified buyer putting a certain amount down under certain circumstances. Now, why would anyone want this to happen? Well, according to the Biden administration, they're saying the whole purpose of it is to make well-qualified buyers pay a little bit more so that buyers who aren't as qualified can get into homes cheaper. The goal is to allow for more affordability in housing and sustainable housing for minorities, low-income families, people in low-income areas. So that's kind of the who, where, what, and why. Now, you got to remember, mortgage rates do not change lender from lender. So if I qualify for a 5% mortgage with bank A, I'm going to qualify for a 5% mortgage with bank B. But the thing that does change is the fees that lenders charge. Now, I want to talk about who this applies to and who it doesn't apply to. Well, more importantly, who it doesn't apply to. If you already have a mortgage, it's not going to apply to you, so don't worry about it. And this only applies to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA loans. So if you get a commercial loan through a commercial bank, you don't even have to worry about this. So to understand this, there are really two things that are going to determine what your fees are associated with the interest rates you're going to get. Your credit score and how much you're putting down. So under this model, uh, someone with a 660 credit score uh, or less, they'll get cheaper fees than someone who has a higher score and is putting anywhere from 10 to 20% down. In the past, someone with a 639 credit score who was putting 3% down, they had to pay about 3.5% in fees. Under this new model, they'll pay 1.75% in fees, so it's cheaper for them to get in their house with that interest rate. Now, they may not have a better interest rate than a well-qualified buyer, but like I said, their fees are going to be less. The question is, if I were buying a house, DFD, if you were buying a house, what would you do to kind of avoid this? Well, one of the things that trigger it is having a, a, a great credit score and putting anywhere between 10 to 20% down. So according to this model, if you actually have a, a, a great credit score, you're a well-qualified buyer, but you bring your down payment down to 5%, it'll put you in that category to get lower rates because those rates only apply for people with highest credit score and who fall between that 10 to 20% down. So that's definitely something you want to consider. So under this new model, someone with a 680 credit score who's putting anywhere between 10 to 20% down will likely see an increase in fees of 0.13% all the way up to 0.75%. Now, depending on the amount of the mortgage, if it's low, if it's high, that it could be hundreds or thousands of dollars. But I just wanted to break down and explain what was going on. President Biden didn't change interest rates. Well-qualified buyers aren't going to have higher interest rates than buyers who aren't as qualified. But well-qualified buyers are going to pay more fees than someone who's not as qualified. And I know a lot of people out there are salty and hating on it. This is kind of my view and how I looked at it. When I purchased my first home, would this have helped me or not? Yes, when I purchased my first home, I was definitely not a damn well-qualified buyer. I was an unwell, <laughs> I, was a, I was a medium well uh, qualified buyer. I wasn't even medium well. This would have benefited me. It would have allowed me to get into my house paying a lot lower rates. So I would have had to have less money up front when I'm coming to the table and it would have been cheaper for me. So there is a benefit. This is going to be great 
for people who are first time home buyers. So if you're a first time home buyer, hey, it's going to be great. And like I said, there are some things you can do to avoid the increased rates. If you're a well qualified buyer, don't put between 10 to 20% down. You could bring that down to about 5% to get those lower fees, even though your rate will be the same because the rate you qualify for is the rate you qualify for. Or your other option is, like I said, you can go ahead and get a commercial mortgage and avoid Fannie and Freddie and FHA loans altogether. That's it. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Is this good? Is this bad? I'm going to lean on the side of, I think this is good because I know this is something that would have benefited me as a first time home buyer. And they're looking at trying to get people into homes who normally wouldn't be able to get into homes and get them into these homes at cheaper prices. So I'm going to put this in the good category. Y'all let me know what y'all think.